Miss Teeger will be joining us. We'll need another place setting. I don't think there's room, sir. It's all been planned out to the centimeter. It took me all night. Melville, I'm not going to ask you again. Thank you, sir. Put Miss Teeger at the table. Put her next to me and do it now. As you wish. Everyone, this is Natalie Davenport, an old friend of mine from high school. At least I hope she still considers me a friend. Oh. <laughs> you look fantastic. Oh. Really, I mean, you haven't changed a bit since high school. Oh. <laughs> well, wouldn't say that. <laughs> look at that. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Well, my boyfriend couldn't make it. He had to go to anger management class. Again. Well, I better get back to the, uh, I'm glad you could come. Mr. Melville, will you help me with my coat? How did you do that? See, Mr. Monk, when two people love each other, they want to express that love. What? It's a pillow. Ah, well, that explains almost nothing. I had to come. I realized something about the frogs. What frogs? Okay, on that 911 call, there were no frogs in the background. You were there? Remember how loud they were? That call was definitely made from someplace else. Not necessarily. Maybe they just weren't croaking. Maybe they were tired. Frogs don't get tired. You don't think frogs get tired? No, I don't. Believe me, frogs get tired. The hopping and the thing with the tongue. You try hopping around and catching flies, you wouldn't last 10 minutes. This man is a creep. Why are you protecting him? I'm not protecting anyone. There is no evidence then here. Then find some. You're a detective. You were supposed to go check out the car in the garage. Have you been to the garage? No, something came up. What? This, my life, my new career. I love it here. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I can tell you look terrible. Well, fortunately, this job is not about my looks. Have you been sleeping at all? No. Mr. Melville, should we begin the main course, sir? Yes, thank you, Mrs. Murphy. All right, give me the page. What? My father's journal, you stole a page. Give it to me. Put it on. Why? There's going to be an accident. I told you, it happens all the time. Hey! Have you seen Natalie? Uh, she's with Paul. Uh, back that way. We'd have to borrow this. What, Paul, you just, you can't do this. Oh, I can't? Look up there. See that well? Two weeks ago, I shot my butler and dropped his body in it. You should have gone with me to the prom, Natty. The cannon! Lower the weapon. Melville, just lower it! Well, you're fired. That goes without saying. Mr. Monk, look. His father kept a journal. He came back before he died. <sighs> makes sense. It all makes sense now. His father died of a heart attack, like the coroner said. Paul must have found him. But he had a problem. His stepmother would inherit everything, and he would be completely cut out. Unless... She died, too. She not only had to die, she had to die first. Or at least it had to look like it. Because if she died second, even by a few minutes, her children would inherit everything. He got her to leave the house. Come quickly, there's been an accident. He brought her up to Sweeney Road, and that's where he killed her. <coughs> then he set the stage. You were right about the phone call. There was no signal. He had to walk a few miles to call 911. My wife, she's dead. Where are you? On Sweeney Road, right near Spider Lake. I'm, I'm feeling her pulse. She's definitely dead. She's not breathing. Her neck is broken. I don't think I can. <coughs> oh, oh, God. I can't breathe. Sir? My heart. Are you all right? Oh. Imitating his father was easy. Mrs. Claridge mentioned he sounded just like him. So it was perfect. They were both dead. And your stepmother had obviously died first. Who are you? This is my boss, Adrian Monk. It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. No one.
one seems to care. Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? It's jungle.